This is the uh, March 16th meeting of the Conway Select Board. We're being videotaped by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing by our residents and the public uh, later on. First item on the agenda, uh, the minutes for the March 9th meeting. Uh, has everybody reviewed the minutes? Yes. Everybody, uh, it's, just me, it's just me here, Doug. Any additions or um, changes? No, actually, they're fine. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for the March 19th. Do I have a second? Yes, you do. All in favor? Yes. Okay. We have three warrants tonight. We have a vendor warrant for $762,047, payroll warrant for $112,025, and a payroll deduction warrant. $28,118. I'll make a motion that we accept those warrants. Do I have a second? Yes, there. All in favor? Yep. Okay. Uh, next item, I'm going to move up the discussion of our public health concerns to the next item on the agenda. Uh, and I'm going to start out by reading a uh, declaration of a state of emergency for Conway. Uh, read, okay. Read, reading it? I'm going to read it so that everybody will know what's in it. Okay, this is for the Town of Conway from the Board of Selectmen, Emergency Declaration, uh, March 16, 2020. Whereas on March 10, 2020, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth, in Executive Order Number 591, uh, issued a declaration of a state of emergency to respond to COVID-19. Whereas the disease caused by COVID-19 is a very contagious <coughs> and at times fatal respiratory disease, particularly to elderly persons and those with underlying health issues. Whereas the symptoms of COVID-19 include fever, cough, and shortness of breath, and the disease can spread from person to person uh, by respiratory droplets produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes. Whereas on March 15, 2020, according to the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, DPH, uh, there are 45 confirmed cases and 109, uh, 119 presumptive cases for a total of 164 cases of COVID-19 uh, in the Commonwealth. Although there are no confirmed or presumptive cases of COVID-19 uh, in Franklin County or in the town of Conway. <coughs> Whereas the town of Conway has a population vulnerable to the effects of the disease caused by COVID-19 and out of an abundance of caution, it is prudent to bring the health and emergency resources of the town uh, through the emergency management director to bear against any potential spread of COVID-19 to ensure minimum impact of the disease on the health and safety of Conway residents. Whereas declaring a state of emergency for the town of Conway will facilitate and expedite the health and emergency resources of the town, inform residents of the best practices recommended by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, and the Department of, um, and the Massachusetts Department of Public Health to avoid contracting the disease or for those who suspect that they have the disease, monitor uh, the most vulnerable uh, population in town and allow the town to access Commonwealth emergency resources. Now, therefore, I, John P. O'Rourke, chair of the board of selectmen of the town of Conway, pursuant to the powers provided under the appropriate general laws of the Commonwealth, and the general uh, bylaws of the town of Conway do hereby issue this proclamation that now uh, exists in the town of Conway a state of emergency. This proclamation of a state of emergency is effective immediately and shall remain in effect until notice is given pers uh, pursuant to the judgment of the Board of Selectmen that the state of emergency no longer exists. Uh, essentially, the reason we're doing this is to um, basically uh, fall in line with what the governor is doing uh, and hopes that um, uh, if there is emergency funding for any reason that we can um, take part in that if we need to. Hopefully we won't have to, 
hopefully no one in Conway um, gets the disease as a result of uh, this virus. Um, and what I want to do uh, is talk about, we have a press release that's going to be going out. Uh, I, I will need a signed copy of that. Of this? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll, I will do that. Um, and uh, we also have our emergency management director here, Mr. Murphy. Um, we're going to put this, all of this info on the town website. Uh, I think we should do a reverse 911 call. It's my intention to do a reverse 911 at some point tomorrow morning, say 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, unless you feel as if it should go out tonight. Um, I, th I think tomorrow morning's fine. That's my intention. Uh, the Blackboard Connect people suggest that you keep it to a maximum of 60 seconds. Otherwise, you run into problems with hang-ups. Okay. Um, I don't think we're held to that. We can go a little over if we need. Uh, at this point, what I would do primarily is announce that there has been an emergency declared and direct people to the town website and to my own email access. Uh, if you could also mention that the public offices, uh, that the town offices are closed to the public. Okay, I, I have a question on that, and, and I just, I, real, I understand why you're doing that, and I've looked at what other towns have, have done, and I think that it's just a personal opinion, just so it doesn't look like we're being prejudiced or picking favorites, that all town buildings should be unlimited access. And now I know they don't get a lot of people visiting the highway garage, but I think technically unlimited access. No, limited access. Unlimited access. Unlimited access. Okay. okay. I'm just saying, if you're going to do it for town hall, do it for the highway garage, do it for the fire station. All all town buildings. Okay. Sure. Yeah. All town. All buildings. public buildings. Yes. Yeah. All town public buildings. Limited access. Are limited? Or and and, a, and no, they're not closed because the, the limited employees. Limited staff. And staff, to staff. Well, no, we're, we're going to let committees use the mailboxes in the town office, but that's the extent. There's going to be a, a, a barrier at that point. So, but they're, they're really public servants, so they're acting on behalf of the town. Well, okay, I just want to make it really clear yeah. that these people are still working. People get really pissed off if public service oh, no, 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 and no. not servicing everybody. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but even, yeah, yeah, I, I get that, party. John. Yeah. But I also know <coughs> how things go at town meeting or and you know they just people get grumpy about these things. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make it sure that everybody knows that the people who work in town hall or in the town office building are still in the town office building. Some of them will still be working remotely. Okay, well I'm not gonna get into that kind of detail. I think the point is well taken <coughs> that they're all still working. I don't want to get a situation yeah. at town meeting where you're looking for a little more money for a department or a race for somebody <coughs> and they're all going yeah, I couldn't get this done. Yeah. No, okay. okay. No, the, the message should be that the town offices are closed to the public. Closed to the public. But, closed to the public. But everybody yeah. who works there will still be accessible by phone or email. Absolutely. Oh, okay. yes. Absolutely. I just want to make sure that's clear. Yeah. Uh, and, and essentially, what's the plan to uh, check in on some of our vulnerable residents? Well, that's. I, it's interesting because Phil initially had suggested, uh, we had talked the other day about he has a particular problem with school kids who depend on the school for lunch and breakfast. And these are at need kids, at need, uh, needful kids. All right, well, and, well they're, they're going to get, they're going to get right. their meals. Yep, they are. They are. Yep. Yeah, okay. That has nothing to do with our vulnerable population. Well, That's, we're they, talking they about are those. a vulnerable population. So, well, so and, but wait a minute. Where, the mechanism that's taking care of them is something we should be paying attention to because it gives us a path to take care of these other people. So my question is, are the vulnerable people that you're talking about, are, is there a meal we're, we're talking, we're is talking taking about, place? We're talking about the elderly in our town that already have underlying health conditions. We have a list of those people. That yes, we, I know. Okay. That we that we take care of. My in, question in to you is, what what services are going to them now? 
Well, we don't. They're not in an emergency situation right now. Okay, okay. but they're not routinely getting meals on wheels or anything like that. What, whatever they're getting now, they probably will continue to get. But through our emergency management, we want to be able to check on these people. You're not checking on them now, but you should be checking on them during this period. Okay, that's a good what you bring up. Can you cross reference that? Th this the is wheels, my question: the is, is if we've stuff. got someone going to these people's right. houses mm -hmm. every day anyway, well, well, that'll be one of the ways we're checking on them. Right. Yeah. Well, that's exactly my point. Okay. So that's the information that so I need to cross reference. We need, reference. We need a plan to figure that out, just to make sure we're, we're checking on, on these people and any other people in, in the town that are vulnerable, that have underlying medical conditions. Um, okay, but these people are documented and they are yes. aware that they've been documented. That's right. Okay, yeah. that's yeah. very important. And you have that list. Uh, I don't think I have a very, if I do, it goes back to Dave Chichester, so it's it's not, I mean, it would have Helen Reed on it for sure, and other people. So, I, mm -hmm. I, do we have a, an updated, more modern updated list? Um, Ginny, Ginny Knowlton, the uh, Board of Health Clerk, updated the list. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I have an updated list I can send it to you. If you I would, I appreciate that. Just, just send it to EMD at Town of Town. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Marie was working on Yeah, yeah if you could shoot that out to me, and then. Uh, so what and, and certainly Murph, whatever you know, whatever Carl has input here, you know, uh, you coordinate with him, find out, uh, you know, how the board can be uh, part of this situation. Okay. The board Police, health. fire, and ambulance. Mm -hmm. all, um, all emergency services. Yeah. Right. Right. But beyond that, we have somewhat limited resources and what we can do for these people uh, other, beyond that. We, we do have limited resources. Hopefully, uh, you know, we can use those resources to their maximum during this period until this passes. Okay, and but in, in terms of upgrading those resources, uh, there was an article in the paper today, one of Mr. Baker's, uh, Governor Baker's uh, statements is that they've changed the rule that's going to let pharmacies formulate hand sanitizer out of things they have on hand, can we ask, can the Board of Health maybe contact the state on that and find out if we can move to the front of the queue so that we can, so that we can maybe, you know, so that it doesn't just go into a CVS and get grabbed up by who's there first, if Board of Health can, there's a provision for Board of Health to get moved up in the queue so that we could get some get things that people need to people i mean it, it's you know can can we work through the school who's making lunches for these kids if some of these people need food can we get them mm -hmm. food through that resource okay we'll 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 check into that uh, yeah i mean that's I, I believe that there's a willingness or a desire to do that and we'll see you know but the, i mean i don't want the the, the, the cafeteria staff are all commonly residents they okay they're um, you know, Jeannie, uh, uh, I don't know if giving versus to people at risk is a good idea, but um, the, the, there is so, uh, another uh, population in need that is just sort of bubbling up to the surface now, and it's you don't really think of it because America's child care system is its public schools, right? Um, and so when you close them, you and so there's uh, we have a population in town of physicians and nurses and health care workers that have to go to work and right. Um, right now they do not have child care okay well of any kind um, nobody is providing that and um, they how, how much longer they will be able to continue to go to work with no child care is is not fair to them no um, it isn't but i don't see where we have the resources yeah. the schools are closed and that that's just it's everybody's uh, that's that's a problem that's a problem Yep. All right, so John, I will get the the uh, information from Carl. Right. Do it's you? On its, it's on its way. Oh. Okay. Um, do you suggest that I call these people individually? Um, I, I think we should have some check in with them. Okay. Whether it's know. whether it's you personally or someone you designate to do that. Oh, okay. I can do it personally. Right. Oh, I designate okay. you. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'll be glad to help you. No, I'll take it. I mean, I'll be the list right now. Yeah. Yeah. For my purposes, it would be useful to have a vote to close town buildings to the general public. Okay. All right. Um, as a policy, um, until further notice. to help with this uh, easing the spread of this disease, uh, I'll make a motion that we close our town buildings to the public. Staff will continue be continuing to work in town offices, but we want to make sure that we uh, limit the access by our residents. Uh, the staff will be um, accessible by phone and mail. Uh, and I'll make that motion. Philip, do I have a second? Yes, you do. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. Um, we're going to have some increased testing uh, in, in Massachusetts, so we'll be able to figure out exactly what's going on with this, uh, with this virus and how many people actually have it. Uh, and hopefully we can, we can you know, reduce the curve of this and reduce the the spread of this disease, because right now Massachusetts is not in bad shape. Right. <clears throat> Western Massachusetts isn't in bad shape. Uh, we just have to keep it that because way. all the tests have gone elsewhere. Well, we, we have, uh, you know, again, there's, there's no cases in Franklin County that, uh, as of today, uh, which is good. Uh, hopefully we keep it that way. Uh, and certainly, uh, Certainly in Conway, we want to keep it that way. Uh, and I think we're doing everything we can by, by limiting access to town offices. Uh, with our public meetings, we're going to, we can do them remotely or we can do them publicly with social um, distancing, which is, which is apparently one of the most important uh, elements of maintaining this, this situation. You know, of course, you know, we've got, uh, got to pay more attention to personal hygiene and apparently washing hands is one of the biggest, biggest uh, uh, encouragements to keep this from spreading. Avoiding large crowds, self-quarantining if we have to. Uh, certainly now that all the restaurants will be closed for a month and the schools will be closed for three weeks. Uh, you know, certainly that encourages people to stay more at home rather than go out and get in large crowds. So that, that's important. As much information as we can put on the website as possible, uh, we need to put on. There are two very good publications that um, we have um, links to on the website from the CDC. Uh, what you need to know about uh, the coronavirus and what to do if you're sick with the coronavirus. So. They're very important. Um, and any other information we can put on the site for residents uh, will obviously be, uh, be better. Any updates we can put on. Uh, is, is Roy going to be doing that or is Lisa going to be doing that, Tom? Um, a number of people will be. I think Lisa's the point person okay. for that. All right. But uh, we all can. Okay. We should try to, try to put a daily update on there if at all possible. Okay. All right. Uh, Carl, you have any questions? No. no? Okay. Uh, are we taking any precautions up at the transfer station? Yes. Okay. What? Gloves. Gloves. Okay. Gloves. <laughs> so our our transfer station personnel will be wearing gloves. Yes. Okay. They don't, as a rule. Right. They, they will be when I get done with it. Okay. All right. <coughs> or if and, anything and else you have. And that's open. To no, um, we, have, uh, mm -hmm. we have apparently it's all approximately sure. 20 people here who are on the, the vulnerable list. I'm, I'm very pleased to say that I don't see your name. <laughs> well, that, that's good. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I think I can, you know, reasonably reach out to these people over the course of a couple of hours. Um, yeah, Robert Need, of course, obviously that's not, um, Norman and, French, 
Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You might be looking at the old list. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's um, two lists there. There's one from 2012. Oh, okay. And there's another one from now. Oh, okay. That that explains it. And and you certainly, know, certainly, everybody in town should be looking out for their neighbors just generally. Just uh, if, make sure. You know, if I can get that in the the uh, look out for your neighbors. But basically, the only services we can offer at this time is you know fire ambulance police. Yeah, and and, and monitoring. And monitoring. Yeah. If there's a problem, please don't hesitate to contact me by phone or email. Absolutely. And yeah. I will see what I can do, whatever that is. Oh yeah, this is this is much more. Maybe you should say that the transfer. I'm not on the new list. Now. Station will remain open. I'm not on the new no, list. No, oh, okay. no, no, no. Yeah, he, uh, I should probably mention that the transfer station will be maintaining hours. normal hours. Yes. Okay, normal hours of transfer station. And if you had a few seconds to just discourage people from bringing in big loads and they need an attendant to help them oh, carry okay. it on, throw it into the, you know, just, you know keep, the, keep the small stuff. Right. I actually do have a new uh, addition to that list, too, that's probably not on there. The, the elderly residents that moved into 11 River Street, Thad and Dottie, that, oh, yeah. that, that don't really... Across the street from you. What's that? Across the street from you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we we they, shouldn't discuss anybody's names yeah, not, on the not, list. Nothing Sorry. in particular. Yeah, they're awesome. I love them. Okay, please, please talk to them. Please, please just yeah, yeah talk yeah. to them offline. Talk to them offline and have them call me. All right. So I can get them on the list. I right. have them call Carl, one of the others. All right. And that goes to anybody else you know who maybe should be on this list but isn't. Okay. And as I say, essentially. Testing is increasing. The ability to get a test is increasing. So if anybody feels they have the, uh, the symptoms, they should be tested right away. Okay. Um, all right. Anything else on our state of emergency? Any other questions, Murph? No, sir. Okay. Uh, Carl? No. Philip, got anything else? Um, I, would I, I, I definitely take a, a more, slightly more alarmist uh, position than like, your... your I, I think I think our community is already riddled with the coronavirus. The testing hasn't caught up to it. All of our communities are riddled with it. I think, um, and that uh, all these things that we're discussing will help. And uh, but um, the the, the no, I, I know people I know people that are trying to get tested that can't. And um, to hear the president say today that they still don't have enough tests to meet demand, and that to expect this to go on until July or August was. Pretty, pretty frightening. Um, so, all right. Well, we, yeah. we. Does anybody have any any information aside from you that we're riddled with Corona? Um. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I have a few more items. Go ahead, Tom. I wanted to mention. Um, I do have a public statement. You should you should have a copy of it in your your thing. So I'm planning to put that out. Um, almost immediately. If you have any comments, please let me know. I also have a memo. You should have a... Oh, I'm going to get you a copy of this memo during my update. This is for committees. It's pretty involved, so I'll go into it during my update. Um, and uh, I have um, a proposal for um, a couple of policies. And... You, you have a memo on giving uh, MMA any ideas for relief for municipalities for current laws and regulations. And I gave you a copy of the, the recently existing uh, What to Do About Town Meeting. Uh, that was on the warrant. So, Did you see my email? Yeah, and um, you know, there's, there's uh, more tools in the toolbox now, which is good. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the policies that I'd like to propose are, uh, one, having to do with sick time. So if an employee gets sick, we know that it can take a long time to recover from this disease. Um, could take five or six weeks from the onset of symptoms to uh, complete recovery, including three negative tests. Um, so what I was, uh, what I'm proposing is that, uh, and this is, this is, 
uh, partly in common with what a lot of towns are doing, uh, which is to allow uh, employees <coughs> to accrue negative sick days so that which they pay back later. Um, what I'm proposing that's, that's different is that they earn them back at half, um, so half of, when they, when they earn a new sick day after this is over, half of that goes to paying off the old day, and half of it goes, goes towards giving them a new sick day, because this isn't the only thing people get sick of, and it's going to take them a year to get a few days of, of sick pay. So um, that's, uh, I have, uh, that stated as, uh, um, uh, as a proposal. Uh, employers who are ill, employees who are ill may, after having used up their accrued sick time, accrue four additional weeks of sick time in deficit to be earned back over time. For each hour of sick time earned after the employer returns to work, one half hour shall be used to pay back the deficit, and one half shall be regular earned sick time. So you mean you mean the, those employees who are ill with a diagnosis of coronavirus? Uh, sure, I can insert that. Yeah, for this for this emergency. Yeah, yeah. That's fine then. Any other questions on that policy, Phil? No. Okay. And the, the other one was a, a telecommuting policy that just gives some management control over telecommuting. I don't mm -hmm. know if you saw that in your, yeah. in yep. your papers. I have not yet adapted this by inserting Conway for Hadley and, and making any other necessary changes. But right. uh, assuming in, in principle that this policy is acceptable, I'd like to uh, uh, put that into place once I get it um, edited. All right, let, let me make a motion on this uh, policy for a public health emergency uh, for employees. Uh, I'll make a motion that we accept the policy as, as amended by Philip uh, to apply to employees who are sick with the coronavirus. Uh, the rest of this stays in place. Do I have a second? Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Uh, uh, Thomas, I read the... Uh, I read that other policy you gave us, the telecommuting. Yeah. That looks okay. Philip, what do you think? Yeah, it looks okay. Um, th so th is, would this be something that would then, is, is also limited to coronavirus, the, the era of the coronavirus pandemic, or is this something that is intended to <coughs> outlive that era? Well, for right now, let's, let's, let's yes. pass it for this period. Okay. Yeah, that, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. So I'll make a motion that we pass the telecommuting policy for the uh, duration of the for the duration of the uh, the state of emergency. Do I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Yes. Uh, also, there was a question today that I that I got on on the open open meeting law situation. Uh, committees can still meet uh, physically. They just have to uh, observe. Uh, social distancing. They can limit public access to the meeting uh, and essentially hold their meeting, or they can do some remote um, remote uh, access. Yes. But essentially, some of the rules have been suspended by the governor for the open meeting law. So committees can still meet physically. And I believe most of us are set up to use like do some things like Google Meeting for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Google Meeting crashed twice today, once for two or three hours, another well, time for about an hour and a half. I'm, I'm sure. And uh, it's what we're set to. There's a joint emergency school committee meeting with all 29 voting members uh, scheduled for Google Meeting, virtual meeting tomorrow, St. Patty's Day evening at 6 o'clock. Uh, but, um, yeah. I understand that it's possible. Um, let me bring up what I was gonna, gonna wait for, because it is kind of involved, but um, we might as well go over it now since you mentioned that. This, this is a memo I've been working on. We have set up, um, we have set up uh, conference call numbers 
before all the committees, and I've, I've arranged it so the committees that meet at the same time, or near the same time, don't have the same line. We have three lines available, and uh, what I've, I've already, a couple of committees have meetings posted for Wednesday, and I've asked them to use the uh, conference call option, at least for now. So uh, in lieu of posting the location, they're posting the phone number and the PIN. These will be available to the public. Anyone can call in using that number and that PIN to listen to the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and that also complies with the new rules for um, for this. Yeah. Um, so I could rework this to say, unless you want to meet in person, and uh, I, I, I can maybe add something saying that it's not a preferred option, but it is possible. Uh, what I don't want to do is put pressure on any committee or board, such as the planning board, um, to hold, say, a hearing, and they have mm -hmm. one scheduled now, that um, a lot of people might like to be uh, present at. More people than might actually be able to fit in a room using the social distancing mm -hmm. recommendations. Um, I don't want to put any pressure on them to uh, consider, you know, well, if we if we don't do, if it's possible and we, and we don't do it, then we're going to get, you know, um, some some pushback on that. Uh, so that that's that's the concern that I have about um, at this point um, saying that it's an option. So the the thing is that um, the 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 thing that I take issue with the, just a little bit is the first sentence in the second paragraph where in italics they must be open to the public because. Uh, as you recall from oh, the, right, right, right. they don't, yeah. they don't, and well, in, in fact we, we had to make the, the school committee because the 29 voting members on a single conference call, deci we decided that it was such, it's already a 29 ring circus, and um, to have public people that could t call in, um, like, like the, that first paragraph of the order envisions was just a, uh, a step too many, that, so we, we decided we're going to uh, that that's really there. There isn't really the technology to do that in, in a way that can keep the moving the, the meeting moving along like that. And, um, we're well, gonna, and, and they're they're just going to post the transcript the next day, which is allowed. Um, you, 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 you yes, that's, that's if it's not if it's not feasible, and and, yeah. and I would argue that in fact it is if if the meetings run correctly. But that aside. Um, <laughs> 29. We do. Try to run a meeting with 29 voting members. It's, yeah. It can't well, be done correctly. I, I, you uh, know, I, would, I would challenge John to run any meeting in, in the world right now but based on based on what I've seen him do in common. But um, I, not challenge, but I would invite him. Uh, um, I don't think we're going to have that problem in Conway. And we do have the technical capacity to do it. I'm. Uh, I'm okay with um, deleting that clause, that, that, that All right. phrase. All right. Um, but again, um, I think moving people towards best practice is reasonable for, for you know, the, the committees that we have. Mm -hmm. um, there, you know, there would be a challenge to the planning board and they're looking into using the uh, postponement uh, option that they already have mm -hmm. uh, at this time anyway because of the logistics involved because that would be a larger meeting. Um, well actually it would be a hearing and in hearings the public does have a right to speak. Mm -hmm. If it's a meeting of a committee um, the public does not have a right to speak unless recognized by the chair. And I go into some of that stuff on the, on the, on the reverse mm -hmm. on the second page but um, so this is well, I'm not happy to make that change. Yeah, just a couple of tweaks. Yeah. And, um, you know, work in progress. Ain't we all? If we, if we run into uh, difficulties, we can always. Uh, which brings that work. work in progress on the communicating with the people at risk. Of the 22 people on the list, I only have 10 phone numbers. Um, now, 
That's all. That's all Jimmy had. Oh no, I understand that, okay. but that indicates to me that that's out of the 22 people, those are the only ones who wanted their phone numbers given. I mean, I could cross-reference my Blackboard resource and come up with numbers, but if they didn't give us the number, then I don't know if that's appropriate for me to do. Well, let's see if we can yeah, find it. Yeah, it's totally numbers. appropriate. This, yeah. we're, we're at the time where this yeah. stuff transcends politeness and exactly. transcends, okay. like, I mean, I'm just wondering know, if I whatever. should go with a mail communication. Okay. Well, maybe okay. that, maybe that. Too. All right, well, I'll get a hold of the time. These are people that are with. seriously at risk. I mean, if anybody is. If you, have, no, if you believe that anybody is. I understand that. I also know that we have rules. All right, um, I'll make a motion that we accept the, um, the policy put forth by the town administrator as amended for uh, call-in lines. Philip, do you have a second? Do I have a second? Sure. All in favor? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's go back to meetings attended by select board members. Philip, do you have anything? Um, was here at the town caucus Monday night after our meeting. Um, okay, any other meetings aside from that? Uh, uh, an emergency uh, phone thing to today with the school. There is additional. Let me read what. Uh, one second. The. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, there's just a whole bunch of things that are going on um, about the food services, about what's happening with the different education initiatives, what's happening with the pay for hourly workers, pay for transportation drivers, implications for the length of the school year, um, the need for memorandums of agreement with all of our unions. Um, this was a, a school committee meeting? That, this is uh, the meeting today, the, the uh, emergency telephone conference today to just to agree on sort of the agenda and what how we're going to deal this with this going forward and that was where we came up with the 29 member full committee meeting because um, th there's just too much to go over uh, for just the one representative from each town to deal with so um, Okay. Yeah. Um, the, the first two days, the, it's three days. Of the first, these first two day, Monday and Tuesday, have are, are, were declared snow days, um, and just wanted to really. Th there's a bunch of professionals that were not paid because it's a snow day. Um, we're not actually compensated to be at work to, today and yesterday, and to um, even though or, or work virtually and to assist in getting set up. Um, to work for the next few weeks with students on their own. So that was just a really, um, just would like to recognize everybody in that building for coming together as a community and dealing with this. Okay. Um, good moving forward, but this is not, not what I really envisioned when I agreed to be on school committee. This is like the opposite of the fun that I was hoping to have. Okay, thank yeah. you. Okay, do you have any public comments? No public comments? Good. Old business. Um, you, you didn't have any meetings? I didn't have any meetings this week. Yeah. DCR, offer to buy Chapter 31 uh, land announcement and waiver of 120 day right of first refusal. Okay. Any questions on this, Phil? Well, when we were here, we looked at it last week and we really couldn't make heads or tails of what was really going on. So I believe that some clarification is awaiting us. What don't you understand, Phil? Well, well that didn't mention your, we didn't know what involved you, for one. So <laughs> That was intentional. Uh, well, um, or, or, I mean, we didn't know it involved your premises. We didn't so, know what, whatever. That was. Doesn't, doesn't make any difference. Well, who it involves. It, well, okay, well, whatever. It's a, 
it's a uh, DCR wants to buy a conservation restriction on our approximately 124 acres because it is a uh, important big chunk of undeveloped land next to the existing South River State Forest and adjacent to the uh, the river and has and most of it's species. under national heritage anyway because of rare turtles etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, and other species and so mm -hmm. that's what it is DCR is not we would still own the land mm -hmm. um, and it would still be taxed yep uh, and so this is what it is it's it's not finalized it's in draft mode but they but the the state, the DCR people wanted it to be announced and sent along two sheets of paper for you to sign, mm -hmm. which maybe you have the 120 day waiver. Got it. Right? And then the announcement, a certificate of announcement mm -hmm. that the clerk signs. And I guess, Tom, somehow then you send these back to the sender, the signed forms go back, I presume, to the, to the agency yes. that, yeah. that, that mailed it. Right. So this, this needs my signature and the town clerk's signature. Right. Any, well, any, what is the any impact other? on the town taxes? Negligible, because the land's already under 61. I think it's about 2000 a year now. That's not the impact every year, that's... No, it's less than that, I believe. You know, no, no, actually, you're right, it is both. There's not a lot of difference between, there's some between chapter land and see if re preservation restrictions, but there's some that... that yeah, I mean, I believe in preserving iconic pieces of property that are important to the town, so. We're all set then? Yeah. So I'll make a motion that we sign this uh, letter from DCR requesting a waiver <coughs> of the 120 day notice period. Do I have a second? Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Uh, okay. All right, next item is the uh, review of the draft uh, town meeting warrant. Thomas. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. Uh, and if you need any help with anything, I'll call your wife. <laughs> well, you can call me too if you want. Okay. <sighs> Thank you, Carl. Okay. Thank you, Bernie. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. You're Good work. I mean, somebody's got to do it. We're proud of you. Thank you. Uh, this so, is so I, I do have a question. What's the likelihood town meeting's going to go ahead? Uh, Zero. We we don't we don't know what's going on yet. It's a little too early to really you know. Um, I would I would hope everything goes according to schedule. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Have a good night. Thank you. Okay. And I'll and seriously, you need any help? Yeah. Okay. I thank you for that, and I will keep you updated on what progress I make on this. Great. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Phil. All right, Thomas, you're on. Yeah. So I. Uh, yes. This really isn't anything new. It's just a new form. Okay. Um, and uh, this is how long it is and what it looks like. Um, we, to my knowledge, we did not get an updated. We have not gotten an updated. Um, uh, citizen petition. Uh, John Moore submitted his for repealing 
Section 11 of the planning bylaws, and he took it back to um, uh, address a technical error in the petition. And we have not gotten the, uh, the replacement version of that at this point. Okay, well, what status is that at this point? Can you send, can you send him an email just giving him a no. saying you got to do it like before the next select board meeting or something? Do, do we have, does, is he within the, uh, within the timeline? Well, if it's a citizen petition that comes in, I think it would be a good thing to include it on the town meeting warrant. We have a placeholder? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not, um, I don't think it, uh, let me see if it's in, yeah, it's Article 25 in this. So, you know, he came in before he closed the warrant, you said, fine, we'll put it on, but it right. had a technical error. Uh, you know, I think it would be Do good. we not have the, the right signatures or what? Uh, we didn't, he didn't include the addresses. The signatures were certified as being right. Signatures were valid, orders. but no addresses. So it didn't have addresses. All right, well, tell him to correct that. Yeah, and get it into well, us. He, he knows. He's, that's the town clerk's. Okay. He's dealing with the town clerk with that. I just haven't okay. heard from the town clerk that he's resubmitted. Okay. Um, so I assume he hasn't. Uh, Article 24 doesn't exist. They did not get us a, uh, a revised version. And they're, they're really dealing with... It, uh, wasn't this the original um, that was submitted? Didn't... This was a citizen's petition as well? No, Article 24, the planning board had been considering um, submitting an article. And I have been holding a placeholder for it. I'll, I'll check with them as well. But they didn't, they haven't sent one in. And I don't think they're, I think they're totally focused on the Roaring Glen Farm now at this point. So I think whatever changes they might have had in mind, they'll bring back for some future town meeting. Right, okay. But uh, I, oh, 20, 26 is the one I'm talking about. Okay. Oh, right. 26? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, um, yeah. Right. that's the one that the hearing is scheduled for on March 26th that the planning board is thinking of continuing. Wait, which one is that? 26. Article 26. 26. So the, the petitioners have a, a, a substitute article that they've prepared and that they were willing to present at the planning board hearing on this article. Uh, but that hearing now, I believe, is planned to be continued, postponed from the 26th. OK. All right, so, so except, for, uh, except for Article 24, this is pretty much the warrant? Yeah, and I will check with the planning board um, Conceivable, I missed something or they missed something. Um, I had always included it as a as a placeholder because I knew that their original intent was to do that. So this is just, um, yeah, I haven't even filled in the uh, the figures for FY21. Right. I, I will mention that the planning board voted, uh, sorry, the finance committee voted uh, that the. The, in, the general increase for town hall staff should be 1.6% as that mirrors the uh, Social Security uh, index Who said rise. This? Who said this? this is the Finance Committee's recommendation. Okay. I, I, yeah. Yes. I, I, I thought I'd mention that. Yeah. We're, we're not going to do 1.6. All right. With Article 26, um, are, weren't we going to run that by our town solicitor? Um, I mean, that, these are all very cut and dried legal issues, and I think we were all pretty certain, or many of us were pretty certain, that some of them ran afoul of current regulation. As written, it absolutely does. That's one of the reasons that they prepared a substitute uh, mm -hmm. article. So, I mean, but I, I, you know, I, I certainly didn't want to vote yay or nay on this uh, without. Uh, hearing from our town uh, who has who has actual experience in this field. This is one of his areas. Oh, well, um, we have to print it as submitted. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. I understand so that, but our vote, but our vote right also gets printed. Oh, sure. Well, right now I have no recommendation because that's what you said last week. Right? You see it? At the bottom. Second page. At the bottom. No recommendation. Yeah, I don't think that that's adequate. I mean, we that we should be voting. We should we should say yes or no. No no recommendation was just because we don't have we didn't have the. First of all, it's not even going to be this one, so we're, we're sort of talking about something that doesn't exist. Um, that's a good but, reason to say no recommendation. <clears throat> yeah. But that's not how I would want it printed and drawn up for people. Um, well, if, if, if in fact I oppose, I mean, if in fact we, like, I oppose something, I don't want it, a no recommendation, which is certainly uh, less definitive than opposing something. Well, they did not submit, they haven't had the hearing on this. And they might further revise their substitute article based on the hearing. So we're not going to have anything written. I mean, it'll be a, it'll be a handout at town meeting. I mean, that's that's the situation. It, that, so we you won't be able to make a recommendation even on their substitute amendment until you know what that is. Now the planning board is planning on continuing that hearing. So. Um, it's an interesting legal question as to whether the town can actually vote on it if the planning board has not held its hearing. How can it? Exactly. Can't. So, All right. I expect that to be the recommendation from town council on this article. Okay. If they haven't had their hearing by the time town meeting happens. They may have the hearing. They don't the have the hearing. May it can be voted on. And this, there may be a substitute article, but we might not know that until the night before. So, yeah. Um, I, I mean, mean we, you're still proceeding as if you, you mean that as if town meeting is going to take place. Well, we uh, have to. Yeah. yeah um, we have to. Yeah. Because we have certain deadlines. I think. I think. But before next week, we're going to be ordered to move it. Well, we'll let, let's speculate. Let's see what happens next week. Well, already gatherings of. Over 10 people now. Yeah. The CDC just today for eight weeks, um, no, no gatherings of over 10 people based on the newest data. Um, and that they expect that to extend into July or August. All right, well. That's why the stock market cratered while he was speaking, because when he, as soon as he said that, it, it just dove off a cliff. It, uh, it did. Yes, it did. And, okay. Um, all true. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else on the draft? Uh, nope. Okay. Next item, Tom. Any items in, not anticipated? Forty-eight hours in advance. Uh, no. Okay. Do we have your update? Yes. I've, uh, I've emailed you a copy. Mm -hmm. yes. In committee news, I'm working with the Board of Health to create a job description for an on-call transfer station attendant, as that seems to be a need, to clarify the board's expectations of such an employee, mainly regarding availability. Tom Shaw is selling some land he hopes will be farmed. Where's that? Uh, wherever. I, I, I don't know where the plot is that he hopes will be farmed. Uh, I forwarded that information to the newly revivified Agriculture Commission for transmission to farmers around town. Revivified? revivified. Really? You like that? Yeah, yeah. that's like, uh, sure. Or do we have interest in the, in the Ag Commission? Yes, we have someone willing to be chair. Okay. That's the that's Hope good. Crolius, who uh, right. was... Uh, right. that's, that's your recruit. That's your recruit. Partly inspired by that town academy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. She wants to be on all kinds of things. She's very gone yeah, home. She's, she's uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the March 26th planning board hearing on the citizens' petition to amend the marijuana bylaw will be videotaped by uh, FCAT, uh, except now it might not happen. So news changes quickly these days. Um, in departmental news, uh, obviously I've been dealing with a great deal of information being generated with, related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. As we saw earlier, I've proposed a couple of policies and may have more depending on what the Select Board, Board of Health, and other town officials believe would be helpful. So if you can think of anything, let me know. I'll, I'll see what other people have done. Governor Baker's three new bills today really address sort of the whole wish list of things that MMA was talking about in this regard. I was really, uh, I mean, everything, all the concerns about pushing the budget bad, the, you know, the deadline, the June 30th deadline, all that stuff was all going to be moved aside. So, mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's, he certainly, certainly it's clearing, very narrow, but it, it does what it needs to do, absolutely. Certainly clears the deck for postponing town meeting. It seems like that's really where this is all headed, so yeah. statewide. Um, there was a section you may even have gotten in your in your packet about the yeah. law that said how it was supposed to happen, and that's been loosened to right. a certain degree. Mm -hmm. um, John, oh, I don't. I'm not even going to read this 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 next one. Uh, this is just MMA's priorities for legislation. By the time. Yeah. I wrote this practically, it was outdated, yeah. uh, but a lot of it has been um, addressed. Uh, and as you know, I've asked our EMB to make sure our reverse 911 system is in place. Uh, should we need to get a message out, obviously we're getting a message out tomorrow morning. Nothing <laughs> like quick news. Yeah, I threw this up uh, uh, actually on Friday. Um, there are various U.S. Census Questionnaire Assistance Centers in Franklin County for those who have questions. What a great job to be going out visiting people's houses during this uh, pandemic. But uh, the census is going on. So if you have questions, uh, there are a variety of assistance centers. Uh, call me or uh, look at the... Uh, it's important for people to know that when the census people come to your door, it's when you look out the door, it's pretty easy to see that they have big bat, they have identification, they have bags, they have all kinds of stuff. You can see that they're census people, and you can talk to them. You can open your door and keep them on your porch, and you can answer their questions and uh, do it because there's a lot of town people that are seasonally employed with that. And, um, Although they probably would like it if you don't respond the first couple of times because they get paid for multiple trips back to your residence. Uh, but we want we want everybody to be counted, nonetheless. So um, it's really it's really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you, John. Concerns of the selectmen. You have any concerns? Concerns. The world's on fire. Okay. Well, aside, yeah. aside from that. Yeah. Any other concerns? Um, no. Okay. Good. Uh, I don't know whether you might want to announce or make the decision. I'll probably make the decision now talking about the next meeting. Oh, we're going to do mail and announcements first. I'll wait for the next meeting, but we might just give out the phone number if you want to do that. Okay. Um, okay, mail. Uh, let's see. Uh, in accordance with. Um, what the governor came out with, effective beginning at 12 a.m. on Tuesday, March 17th to 20. All on-premises consumption licensees are prohibited from selling alcohol to the public until 11.59 p.m. on April the 5th, 2020. This includes restaurants, bars, hotels, general on-purpose, uh, general on-premises, clubs, war veterans clubs, continuing care, retirement communities, brew pubs, farmer series pouring permits, manufacturers pouring permits. These establishments are also prohibited from serving any food or drink for on-premises consumption. Only takeout and delivery of food is per permitted. Okay, so that's a three week Suspension of restaurants, bars. They left all the marijuana retail shops open. I was surprised at that. <laughs> okay. Those are, yeah, those are retail operations. Yeah. I mean, as opposed to yeah, but still, uh, seating establishments. But still, I thought, you know, to go out, that's still a reason to go out that they could have banned, I guess. We've got a, uh, an email from uh, Samantha uh, Stalens, who's the case manager for uh, 
Children's Advocacy Center of Franklin County and North Quabbin to tell us that they have canceled the flag raising event which we had scheduled for April the 13th. Okay, that's all the mail. Any announcements? Phil, you have any announcements? Um, no, no. Okay. All right, our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, uh, March 23rd. Uh, right here in the town hall with a joint meeting with the finance committee at 6 30. Uh, yeah, we're to go over the grammar school and the frontier budgets. And you want to go ahead with that um, here or have it as a conference call? Let's let's do it here. Here? Yeah, let's do it here. You, can, you can't you can't do that on a conference call. This room is big enough, and we, yeah, we, it's, well, yeah, yeah, we have we have enough room here. Okay. Any other business come before the board? Okay. Uh, hearing none, I will uh, make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Uh,